I feel very, very anxious and I'm feeling very hot. Is the air conditioning on? I feel, okay, then I am really, really anxious. Who am I? Um, I'm Mengu, Dr. Kendino. Currently, I'm holding the position of Chief Medical Officer with uh, St. John Ambulance Service, PNG. Now, this role requires of me to have clinical oversight on management and <coughs> assessment of patients. I work <coughs> directly under the Chief of Clinical Operations, and so we are responsible for things like looking at clinical governance as well, um, and having oversight of the activities of our ambulance service and ambulance um, operations. I started my journey with St. John Ambulance Service um, back in 2015. That was not an official um, engagement. What happened was the country was had won the bid to um, host the 2015 South Pacific Games in the country. So out of the need for um, us as the provider or host country to have appropriate on-field support and transportation services for patients, sorry, apologies, um, athletes from the field of play or sporting venues um, and appropriately managing them and transferring them to the hospital. Yeah, through our former Chief of Emergency Medicine, Dr. Sam Yokopua, and a colleague of mine, um, Dr. Bobby Welsh, their integral involvement with the ambulance service and organization allowed for us to have more um, in-depth um, involvement with the service. And so after that successful event, the country also again hosted the APEC um, Summit in 2018. And this was the stepping stone for the uh, ambulance service to shine yeah, in its space in pre-hospital service. Um, in terms of logistics, yeah, involvement as well. And the service has gone on to um, collaborate with other emergency services, including uh, the Defence Force, Police uh, Department as well, Correctional Services, Fire Department, so many aspects where there was involvement. <clears throat> and so like I said, it wasn't an official engagement, it was me being part of the voluntary service um, and I only started uh, officially as a reservist medical officer in 2017. Um, and that was again reviewing clinical scope of practice yeah, for the ambulance programs plus for clinicians as well, clinical scope of practice. So it's been an exciting journey until the appointment of Chief Medical Officer in January of um, 2022. Yeah. The most satisfying thing about the job uh, so far is being an interface or link between hospitals and the pre-hospital um, environment. Being able to be um, the middle person between having an oversight over what the pre-hospital team do in terms of stabilization of patients appropriately and correctly um, before transferring to the hospital. And so my presence and the presence of other medical officers um, who are involved with the St. John Ambulance Service just makes it more, gives it more of a feel of uh, us being one team, all in the uh, critical care of patients. So we have other uh, specialists, emergency medicine uh, specialists who are affiliated to St. John Ambulance Service and who would provide their um, expertise <coughs> also and this is usually in the aeromedical space yeah so for appropriate care and transfer through aeromedical transfers um, but we work alongside each other and there's multiple trainings in advanced life support trauma health care uh, trauma um, life support as well that we've all been engaged in so this is the these are the kinds of relationships yeah that have um, continued to encourage 
our um, collaborative work together. So, so far, it has included the staff of who previously worked for NCD PHA and now are associated with Central PHA and staff of Port Mosby General Hospital. So maybe one of the biggest challenges I would see um, uh, in working as a medical officer um, with St. John is, maybe I wouldn't call it a challenge, but it's a good thing to see that there the ambulance service, like with other ambulance services, the St. John Ambulance Service is affiliated to the Council of Ambulances Australasia. So I think with that, there are working groups under the council and they um, keep the ambulances to standard practice. For any of us medical officers who are involved with the ambulance service, the ambulance would have their um, standard practice, a scope of practice in how to manage patients. They're also limited to particular drugs, consumables. Yes, yeah, so, so coming from a hospital service you and the public service, you have to um, submit to what the scope of practice of the ambulance service is. One thing I have enjoyed quite um, immensely working with the ambulance service organization is um, our the component where we are also doing aeromedical transfers um, every transfer would need to be categorized according to priority and in terms of priority it then defines or dictates to us the level of um, care that we are expected to provide for the patient and so through the ambulance service and our aeromedical um, services, we have done everything from critical care to primary transfers that needed basically just supervision of a patient. This task um, requires a lot of cognitive thinking. You have to anticipate issues or problems that you might face. And so you prepare ahead to mitigate those risks. Um, plan, you always plan for the, what um, failures could happen and the deterioration that the patient may have. And so we have had a good um, the ability for the service to do this has won uh, our I mean the esteem and so we have both uh, private referrals being requested and also interagency between the PHAs yeah, of the external provinces to transfer down to Port Mosby or further on to overseas. So that internet, uh, medical uh, transfers include both domestic and international transfers as well. This is something we wouldn't be able to run on our own and so we do have the help and expertise from critical care clinicians, both nursing officers and medical officers, um, through uh, Port Mosby General Hospital in assisting to allow this to be a success.